Welcome to the learning of engineering tutorials. In this video lecture, we are trying to learn the maximum shear stress induced in a, a wire. As you know, the maximum shear stress is going to be developing. So when the shear stress is going to be developing, that means whenever that the member is going to be subjected to the tangential force or they are going to be subjected to the torsional loads. These any one condition must be satisfied. So in this case, what will happen? That wire we are going to be the rounded like a helical form. That's I'm going to be preparing that like a, a closed coil spring. As we know, the spring is one of the highest elastic element because of that shape. So then what will happen here? So that member is going to be trying to take the loads and it will going to be contract or maybe elongate. Once you remove the load, it will come back. It means that the spring is going to be started subjected to the stretching. And once you are removing, it will going to be come back. It means that that member is going to be possessing certain kind of the strain energy or it's happening some work on that system and these things are happening within the elastic limit as you know when i'm going to be talking about the closed coil springs over here it's going to be looking like this this is going to be a skeleton view i have drawn here as you know the d is going to be small d is the the diameter of the wire and the p is going to be the pitch that existed between the the distance between the two coils and R is going to be over here, is going to be calling your the main radius of the spring. And the W is going to be the, the load is going to be acting on that system. And parallelly, we are trying to use some other parameters in our derivation of the mathematical model that I told to you, diameter of the spring and P is going to be the pitch of the helical spring. N is going to be the number of coils, but that's when we'll be rounding over there. And R is the main radius, W is the axial load, and C is the modulus of rigidity, and the tau is the maximum shear stress, and theta is going to be the angle twist. So whenever it is going to be compressing and that means elongating, that time the member is going to be make the two types of motion. One is going to be longitudinal direction motion, right, and the second one is going to be it is twisting about its own axis. So del is going to be the deflection of your spring and L is going to be length of the coil. In this case, the, the two types of lengths we are going to be open length as well as the, the solid length we are going to say. When I am going to say the solid length, these coils, the distance between the pitch will going to be a zero. So that means the pitch be between these two, I am going to be reducing. That what happened, these coils are going to become in contact like one after one. So then finally, we are going to be calculating. So we need to calculate the maximum shear stress, how much it is going to be developing inside the member when it's subjected to the load. As we know, the twisting moment is going to be, that's indicated at least that T. So how we are going to be find out? The, we know the T is equal to force into the radius we generally used to be taking. So here, this is going to be the axis means the load is going to be acting. At the same time, the main radius of the spring is going to be available, that's going to be capital R. So that I'm going to be taking the T is equal to W is the load is acting on the member and the distance for that one is going to be the capital R. As you know, when it is already be told, it is also subjected to the torsional loads also because of the, the motion. So then what will happen here? So that torque already we derived, that is the torque due to the twisting moment, the T is equal to the 5 by 16 tau into D cube we are going to be taking here. So can you see the D is going to be the diameter of the coil, right? And capital R is going to be the mean radius of the, the spring we have taken. So this R is going to be representing the, the distance between your central axis to the outermost layer. And the D is going to be representing here the diameter of the your wire. So then what happened? I'm going to be taking the equation one and the equation two. When I'm going to be comparing these two equations, what I'm going to be getting, that's going to be a 5 by 16 that is going to be 1 is equal to 2 suppose 5 by 16 tau d cube is equal to w into r so from this one i want to find out the shear stress so then the tau is equal to then the formula is going to be 16 w r divided by 5 d cube we will get so this is the way we are going to be calculating your the shear stress is going to be developed in a coil spring. So now, once we are going to be calculating the, the maximum shear stress, now I am trying to find out the deflection of the, the spring we are going to be calculating. The deflection of the spring here, the first we need to find out the length of the one coil. So then how could you find out here? 
So the length of the coil is equal to we are going to take in pi into d, sorry, the pi into small d we are going to take in. That is the perimeter length we are going to consider that I am going to break in 2 pi r. Sorry, this is going to be the 2 pi r is going to be your the small the radius of the shaft. So now what I am going to do, I am going to be substituting. Sorry, uh, we need to take here is going to be the capital D. That's going to be the total, uh, the perimeter we are going to be taking that is the pi D. So then 2 pi R I am going to be taking because D is equal to 2 R is the formula. So from this we have developed. This is for the, the length of the one coil. Now what I am going to do, I am going to be, I am going to be taking the total length of the coil. That is going to be L is equal to, then in this case, the length of the one coil is available. There is a number of coils also there. So that I am going to be taking 2 pi capital R into the end is going to be your the total length of the your the spring we got it. As we know that when the load is going to be subjected to the axial load, then the member is going to be subjected to the torsional loads also. So then what will happen? Each and every part particle of the spring is subjected to the, the torsional loads, and then that equation we are going to take. It means that this member is going to be absorbing the energy in the form of the a strain energy. As we know, the strain energy equation U is equal to specifically for your the torsional members. That's going to be the tau square by 4C into volume we are taking. Now I'm going to be substituting the tau value as well as the V value. If once I'm going to be substituting the tau as well as the V, so tau is equal to 16W R by pi d cube we got it. Then what is the volume of this spring? So we know that the volume of the spring is equal to how we are going to be taking here. So that the volume is equal to the area of the wire that's going to be 5 by 4 the d square and the length we are going to be considering. So that's going to be v is equal to area into the length. The length means I'm going to be taking here that's going to be 2 pi capital R small n. Now we got it what is the v value and what is the tau value. Then I'm going to be substituting in this equation. That's going to be u is equal to tau is equal to how much it is 16 w r by pi d q whole square by 4 c into 5 by 4 d square 2 pi r n i got it. So I'm going to be simplifying this equation then we will get the strain energy. Once we are getting the strain energy and using the work to done at by the spring or work acted on the spring, we are going to be comparing on this one. Once we are getting, simplifying this equation, I am going to be relieving from the square over here and that's going to be, this is the equation we are going to get. 16 to 62 W square R square divided by pi square D cube D cube. That means that this D to the power of the 2 we are going to be getting. That's 1 by 4 C, 5 by 4 D square into 2 pi R n. Once we are getting and I am going to simplify and finally I got this equation that is going to be strain energy the stored inside the spring that is equal to the 32 into W square R cube that is N by C into D to the power of 4 and I am going to be equating and further I want to find out the deflection and then the deflection is nothing but here the system is going to be start to vibrating in the up and downward direction that is because of the, the load acted. So then that is the work done is e acted on that system is equal to the average load we are going to be taking that's going to be the w into the deflection i can take it here right the deflection is going to be from the main position it is moving in the downward direction so the strain energy is equal to the work done if i'm going to be comparing these two then i will get the the final deflection from the the spring so when I compare between the work done as well as the strain energy because of the external load W, that's going to be half into W del D. So then I am going to be identifying the del D. So that's going to be your, uh, the delta is nothing but your deflection of the spin that is equal to the 64 WRQ into N by C into D to the power 4. As we told, the D is going to be diameter of the wire, capital R is going to be the mean radius of the, the spring we have taken. This way we are going to be calculating the, the deflection of the spring. So once we calculated the deflection of the spring, now we are trying to find the stiffness of the spring. The most of the time, the mechanical components but on the basis of the two parameters we are going to be calculating. One is the stiffness and second one is going to be the, the rigidity of the system. 
So in this case, the stiffness of the spring we got it, that indicator letter is the L, that is equal to load per unit deflection. That's going to be W by del. As you know, the del equation already we derived, that's going to be 64 WR cube N by C V to the power of 4, and the W is the W W will going to be cancelled, and mathematically we are simplifying that equation. So then final equation of your del is equal to the C V to the power of 4, small d to the power of 4 by 64 capital R cube into N. So in this case, from the deflection, the finally we the, the load is going to be parameter is going to be nullified. So the final equation of the deflection is going to be this is the part. So these are the parameters are going to be equivalent. In this case, the C is going to be the constant, right? And the number of coils, if you vary, so then what will happen? Your deflection is going to be decreases. So then the the deflection of the spring is inversely proportional to the, the number of coils. When the number of coils is going to increase, that's going to be deflection will decrease. It means that the member is behaving like a solid object. When the radius is going to be also increases, so then the deflection. When the small diameter, and these are going to be directly proportional. In this case, if any one parameter is varying, then we can see how the, the behavior of the, the spring. So I hope you are able to understand the today's topic and we have identify the maximum shear stress is going to be acting on a, a wire and the further we have identified the deflection of the, of a, the spring how it is going to be deflecting mathematically so then after we have derived the, the stiffness of the spring so these three parameters are going to be very widely using for the design of the, the components over here so still if you feel any difficulty or confusion please put in the comment section so that I can reach you out thank you